Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another painting tutorial. This one is on a super fun and interesting miniature. It is of course an extremely rare miniature as well. It is the Mounted Krieg Commissar for the Death Corpse of Krieg. So he is meant to go alongside the Death Riders of Krieg um, and lead them into battle. Um, I've had this model in my collection for I'd say easily over 10 years. Um, um, the first time I came across it, um, a friend of mine had opened his case in a uh, games workshop and um, take out his army to play a game and there it was sitting in its baggie on top of uh, his case and um, I quickly inquired about it and he told me that it was a, a games day exclusive four drilled miniature and um, I swooned over it. I asked him if he would sell it to me. He turned me down. He said, nope, I intend to do a Krieger army at some point. Um, and um, that will be part of that army, so you cannot have it. Which of course broke my heart, but hey, fair enough, that's his model, he does what he wants with it. Well, about six, seven months later, he pops back into the store and asks me, are you still interested in purchasing the miniature? I have no need for it anymore, I decided I'm not going to do it, and you're my first port of call to sell it. I of course jumped on the opportunity and managed to pick it up for a steal, and it has been sitting in my backlog, in my collection, for the longest period of time. So I am super glad that I finally managed to uh, to pull it out, get it cleaned up, put together, paint it up, and on the shelf with the rest of my Painted Creek. This is a super interesting video. Um, I actually show off the Creek Commissar in with a full squad of Death Riders at the end of the video. So stick around and have a look at that. It looks pretty sweet when they're all together like that. Um, and yeah, enjoy. As with every Forge World model, we begin with the cleanup and the prep. As you can see, these models all come with these resin tabs all over them. And um, these are quite fragile pieces, so you don't want to go snapping them off. You want a nice sharp clippers, and you want to carefully remove them. I don't try and go underneath the feet here. I know I can't get the correct angle, so I cut away the tabs. As you can see, I'm doing here. Cutting away each, the tabs from each side meaning it's much easier to clip her in against the hooves or claws. It's kind of an in-between hoof and claw with this model, um, which makes it a lot easier to uh, cut those pieces off uh, safely without damaging the, the soft resin. Then move over to a scalpel. And I'm using this to clean off any of the bits that the clippers left behind, but also scraping away things like mold lines or any excess resin that was left in the uh, molding process, any nooks and crannies. Uh, we want to get rid of all of that. So take your time with these kind of miniatures, making sure you remove all the little excess pieces because they will show up really badly when we're doing things like shades or contrast later on. So once the part is cleaned up, it should look nice and pristine, something like this. No little bits of flash and no mole lines left on this piece. Once you have all the parts of the miniature uh, taken to this clean, nice standard, then we can move along and assemble it. All I need is a few drops of super glue um, to assemble four drilled resin models. The resin themselves is quite porous, so uh, the super glue grabs really nicely um, and holds it together really fast. From there, I moved along to uh, super gluing it to a temporary base. Um, and then after that, I gave it a nice quick spray. So I did an all over coat of Chaos Black and then I Zenithled it with Gracier. After that, I prepared its base. Um, if you want to see how I did the base for this miniature at any point, I, I will leave a link in the description um, linking it to the Krieg bases that I did. So I decided for this miniature, he's. Um, quite an officer and I wanted to stand out in the battlefield so I decided I would give him a white stallion. So I started with a nice clean coat of apothecary white contrast all over the horse's skin. Once I had the apothecary white all over the horse and it had dried, I was left with something like this. 
The next stage on the miniature after this was to give the horse an all over dry brush of rack white. This is just to catch all the raised edges on the miniature um, and pull it a little bit more to the white spectrum as opposed to the grey spectrum. This miniature isn't the most fantastically sculpted thing that I've ever worked on. Um, some of the musculature on these miniatures is a little strange, so uh, the dry brush did catch in some weird ways. But we shall power through. We are going to go for another dry paint here to bring it up even more. So we're going to go to pra uh, Praxetti White. And we are once again going to dry brush the horse. But this time we're going to go a little bit lighter. Just want to catch the most raised areas of the horse. Um, to uh, basically bring out those highlights even more. Now at this point it looks quite rough. Um, I wasn't massively happy with the smoothness on the horse's skin so I decided what I would do is go back and glaze over the apothecary white contrast again. This will leave the Praxetti white and the rack white coming through just fine but it would also smooth out the transition between all those colors. So as you've seen I look a little bit chalky here. I wasn't happy with it. And for a model as special as this, I might as well put in a little bit of extra effort um, and just try and smoothen out that horse's skin. I know the horse won't be the focus. Everyone will be staring at the glorious uh, Commissar rider on top. This is also a re really hard miniature um, to photograph um, and to keep in frame because his Laz pistol is held directly in front of his face. So there's no angle for photography or anything that gets you a, a nice view of his face because um, it's blocked off. This guy knows how to block the paparazzi. So as you can see, the apothecary white is being applied, which is smoothing out the transitions like this, but the uh, it doesn't look quite so chalky. So I was quite happy with that. So from here, we are going to use Agaros Dunes, and we're going to apply this to basically his entire horse rigging. So all the little pouches, the saddle, the stirrups, his bedcloth, the gas mask that the horse is wearing, all of those bits and pieces. Um, are going to be base coated with this nice um, kind of tan brown color. Um, it'll be great to layer up from um, later on after the wash stage. Um, but it is just great to slap down a base coat of this. Just start blocking out all the colors on this model. And trying to pick out the rider from the horse. So this is what it looks like when the Agros Dunes is all over. As you can see it, it definitely broke up all the barding on the horse. You can start to visualize um, what parts are supposed to be what color. So from here, we are going to move over to the uh, Black Templar Contrast, and this is for his Black Storm Coat. Um, the most iconic piece of Commissar gear is his big black trench coat. So uh, the Black Contrast was an ideal color to base coat this with. Now you want to take your time with this. You don't want to hit any of the white horse, obviously. Um, and also the Agros Dunes will get stained quite badly if you hit it. So. Take your time with this and um, try and be as neat as you can. And this is what it looks like when all the black parts on the miniature are done up. We're now gonna move over to Nasdrag Yellow. We're gonna use this to base coat any of the bits on the miniature that are going to be gold. So his big uh, fancy dress uniform front it's got some sort of gold threading going through it, um, judging by all the artwork pictures and miniatures that other people have painted. So I'm going to give that a coat of Nasdaq yellow. And then any of the Aquila insignia, so on his cap, there's one on the front breast part of the horse. Um, and then obviously his sword has a lot of details like that and the hilt of it. And so we're going to hit that with the Nasdaq yellow. And then later on in the video, we're going to bring that up with actual gold paint. So there's the Nasdaq yellow. Now we're moving on to the Blood Angel red contrast and gonna do all the signature red pits. So the lapel of his jacket, um, the cuffs of his jacket, the scabbard of his sword, and I'm not 100% sure what the, um, those frilly shoulder parts of uh, military uniform are called. If anybody knows, they can drop it in the uh, comments below. I'd actually love to know what the actual name is. So feel free to educate me. And, but once again, quite careful with this. We do not want to stain any of the black or Nasdaq yellow with this color. A 
that's all of the red parts applied. We're now going to Wildwood really quick to throw a quick base coat on his boots and the holster of his Laz pistol. Unfortunately, me keeping the miniature in frame here was not fantastic. I do apologize for that. But like I said, it's just a quick coat on his boots and his uh, holster. It's kind of starting to uh, look like an actual miniature now. The colors are starting to get blocked out. And uh, I really felt like I was on the way. So now we're moving on to the uh, lead belcher base paint, metallics, and we're gonna base coat all of the metallic parts. So his little uh, knee pads he has there, the beautiful uh, armored headpiece that the horse is wearing, which I didn't realize after owning this model for 10 years, taking the parts out loads of times, I hadn't realized that the metal armor panel part of the horse is actually a big, beautiful, like crazy skull motif going down it. Obviously a, a death rider's horse is a pretty scary thing as it is, but these ones being extra scary, being ridden by a commissar, so they're obviously going to have um, crazy armored headpieces. Um, during the layer process later on, I will show it off to you uh, a little bit better than I did there. Now it's on for the Seraphim Sepia, and we're going to use this to shade the entire model minus the horse. So the entire commissar on all of this saddle and barding parts are going to get a quick coat of Seraphim Sepia just to tie all the colors together. Um, any of the white bits left over from the spray, if I missed any nooks and crannies, we'll get filled in with this and just act like shading for later on. And there we have it. After the Seraphim Sepia is dry, that's what we're left with. So this is a beautiful place to, uh, to start building up color again. The first color we're gonna use is Tolerant Sand to build up all of that barding um, and saddle parts on the miniature once again. So I'm gonna go for kind of like a feathering technique here. I definitely don't wanna go in and fill in all the nooks and crannies. I wanna keep them nice and dark. This is just a nice plush leather. Imagine uh, an officer of this rank would have quite nice equipment. And I definitely want him to stand out from the standard Death Rider troops. I'm really looking forward to getting um, this guy in the table for some games um, along with the rest of my Krieg. My Krieg sit at about 3,000 points now and I've never seen a table. It's very sad. So there is all the barding um, and the saddle and stuff layered up now. I think it looks pretty slick. Now we're going to move over to Corvus Black and we're going to uh, layer up that storm coat, the black leather trench coat. I like using things like Corvus Black because it's got that touch of grey to it. Which means this stands out a lot better than just a flat Abaddon black. So I'm just going to follow the uh, folds and lines of the cloak, cloak, sorry, the jacket, um, and layer it up, being neat and tidy. Commissars are my literal favorite thing in the 40k universe. I don't know how many of them I painted up at this stage. There will be very few Commissar miniatures I don't own. Um, and I would love to play an army based around a, a Commissar cadet school. Maybe every squad of Cadians is led by a junior cadet Commissar miniature. I think that'd be very cool. The uh, back of this jacket was actually quite hard to layer up. The, uh, the lines were quite bizarre on it. I don't think it was sculpted particularly well, um, but I did the best that I could. And this is the jacket after I have layered it up along with his peak cap. Now it's time to move on to the Evil Sun Scarlet and layer up all those beautiful red parts on the model, the scabbard of the sword, the dangly bits on his shoulders. Once again, apologies that I don't know the name of those. But this is the part of painting a miniature that I love the most those last few layering parts, you know you're coming to the, the end of the miniature um, and you're getting quite happy with the results you're getting. It's kind of why I paint miniatures. How good it's gonna look on a cabinet, in a, in a cabinet, sorry, on a shelf, surrounded by uh, the rest of the army. Looking pristine. Carefully go around the dangly bits. The 
people are going to notice these parts of the model because it's uh, quite bright and vibrant colors um, on top of everything that's quite dark. So you want to be quite careful with those. Try and do as good a job as you can on them. Layering up his cuffs. And then the lapel, I believe we will uh, attempt to get a nice neat coat on that as well. Sometimes those painting handles are extremely useful and then sometimes act like a counterweight when you're trying to hold it a funny way. But 99% of the time they're useful. There we have it. There's all the red um, base coated up on this miniature. Or should I say layered up on this miniature. Next is Retributor Armor Gold. And every, all of those parts that were Nasdrag yellow um, from the base coat, we're going to shade or layer up now with a little bit of the Retributor armor. Like I said, we're only adding a few fine dots. Nothing too crazy. You can leave the Nasdrag yellow in all the deep recesses. This is just for all the highlight points. I mean, I think that scabbard looks pretty good now. quite happy with that and then obviously these are gold parts around the tops of his shoulders um, his chest piece the quilla across the top of his peak cap and like I said on the breast of the horse and with that the miniature is complete and it's time for the grand reveal so after I was finished painting it I attached it to a base to match the rest of my miniatures in the Krieg army and this is what I was left with I was thoroughly pleased with the result of my paint job and I think this will fit beautifully into my Krieg army and into my Death Rider squadron. I really hope you guys liked this video, um, something a little bit different, an old Forge or model. I um, hope you enjoyed the process of me uh, assembling it and painting it up. Um, if you did enjoy this, make sure you uh, smash the like button. If you have any questions about anything that we did here today, make sure you drop a comment below. I will get back to each and every one of you. Um, if you like the channel as a whole and you feel like you want to support it even more, um, there will be links to my um, Patreon uh, down below. I would love to have you guys as the newest members of our fun community. Until next time, guys.